two and three were very winnable you know having the nyx on awoken and having the slash on uh, the final map they're, they're very good positions to be in but we're not there quite yet we are starting over on ruin cnz on the anarchy Back over on that struck on Pika. CNZ with no oh with no major items to start with. Out of position. So he just pop his inject very early off the bat. Doesn't have a rocket either, so this is why we're paying a little bit slower around the map as well. And he also knows pretty much where his opponent is. So slower start from CNZ once again as he lets Avec pick up the heavy for free. And he's very big delay on this mega as well. Oh yeah. Going for some whales from the top, not oh, no. connecting with the oh, single. No. Oh. <laughs> That's rough. That that's rough. CNC figured that he would be safe up there, but Abic didn't have a way to get to him quickly. But then he misses three of those rails, and that LG damage. Then it starts adding up. It's just one of those things, as we said. Abic, he doesn't look like he has the smoothest of aims, but his damage output is second to none. Pretty much the best in the pro league. And so if you give Abic an inch, he always takes a mile. When you're missing three rails in a row, you deserve to be punished, in my opinion, at this level. That's exactly what happened to CNZ. Once again, is stuck over in this corner. He's already popped the inject, and he just gets whittled down by nice. Pika. That's a rare sight, too, in the Quake Pro League. If Pika ends up getting a kill, it's almost always with the Kamikaze. Very rarely is it actually with the Blaster. So, uh, Avec putting up a bit of a show already. Two frags up, barely 90 seconds into this map. Sitting pretty now. Top level control. Yeah, this is the one map where the speed advantage doesn't exist, which is why, you know, as good as Anarchy is, it's still a difficult matchup. This Strong is very strong, pretty much, in my opinion, anyway. The strongest pick on this map if you can play him effectively. Good trap by CZ, though the conversion is there as he finally hits a rail. Whoa. It took him two minutes, but it is a crucial one at that. Yeah, Avec first got with the wrong weapon out, definitely was not expecting his opponent to be there and ended up backfiring tremendously. At CNC, you can see the respect is still there. You know, it gets the frag, clean frag at that, had a decent stack, but unwilling to press his advantage. Because of that, he was out of, out of position and he's given Avec full raid of the map as he takes away your major, major items once again. CNC is still sitting on the defensive side. Mega going CNC's way as well. Of course, he would prefer the armor since he's got that inject of his own to work with. Now both players engaging in a bit of a rail battle. It's Avic who comes out on top. Oh no, CNZ claps right back. Exactly what he was hoping for. Heavy is up first. Five seconds between the items, give or take. And CNZ is the one locking down the area. Avic is going to have to give that up. Knows that dropping through that rain of rockets is his demise. That does mean that he will be able to take away the mech. I see. Yeah, as you said, the Stars. heavy is definitely the item of choice for the Anarchy, and so we'll should be contested slightly harder than it has been up until now, but at the same time, Avic's been putting a concerted effort to prevent that. Good exchange of rails here, favoring Avic massively. Three to one so far. CNZ has to get out once again. He's already used the inject. He's just trying to do any sort of damage at this point. He knows he's going to lose out his next major item. Good use of the Pika, and CNZ is just trying to do anything before the next round of items. He just can't. I think CNZ didn't, didn't realize that he ran out of railgun ammo right there. He, pu he pushed the edge when the peeker came up, and I think he wanted to switch to rail to quickly take it out, but didn't have railgun anymore. He was out of ammo. That probably led to his demise right there. As Avec running away with a two frag lead at this point. Looking to turn it into a third one. CNZ railable right now. Running for his life, but Avec gets the perfect read. Knows exactly what he's going for. Teleporter. It's gonna find him off spawn as well, but CNZ actually okay. has just enough stack to make it work. Yeah, surprising. It's not the end of the world for Avic though, because he knows it's a witch. But you can see why Avic is just being so aggressive here. CNC did a lot of damage once again. You know, that health off the death of his opponent, plus the item being up. Good awareness by Avic, and at the moment he is just all over CNC. Rockets. He was there as well, you can use it. And there you go, easy frag. Lovely. One of those, it's almost a desperation push by CNZ. It was a decent trap, but you know, when he doesn't have a stack as an anarchy in that position, you're almost banking on hitting these miracle shots, and it just wasn't to be. Now we're kind of getting into the danger zone for CNZ. 
halfway through the map, he's five frags down, and we know that he wants to play a more defensive playstyle, but Havoc is just not allowing him. CNZ so far really hasn't been in control of much when it comes to Five just generally the items and the map. He had a minute or two when he was you know, catching up with Havoc, but it's always been at great cost. Every fight that he takes, even when he wins, CNZ ends up taking so much damage. Yeah, and it feels that almost every initiation, Havoc is getting the upper hand. He's the one hitting the first damage. He's the one then controlling that fight. CNZ pushing out here. Time does connect with the rail, can't hit the second. Avic is sticking around for this battle, though he knows the stats are fairly even, so he's more than happy to. But this time he's losing out. And CNZ needs to finish this one off if he wants to have a hope in this game of coming back into it. One rail will still do it. Oh, there we go. Now CNZ, lower stack than his opponent, and there we go. A third peaker kill. What a ratio. Oh. Three out of eight have been with that active ability. Yeah. We don't see every day. No, definitely not. Avex efficiency has been great, but at the same time, you do feel it's a little bit sloppy from CNZ, you know? Like, the, the kill was there, but at the same time, Avex knew he was weak. He was positioning defensively, and CNZ just ran straight into it. It wasn't even a trap. He just ran headfirst into Avex. This map is going from bad to worse. This is kind of what we talked about in the intro. Like, there is no chill. When CNZ doesn't get his way on a map, it really can snowball away from him. Definitely going in for the rush. A few times too many off the spawn with nothing but the machine gun. When it works, it looks great, right? And it did work yeah. once or twice, but overall, he just gets sent right back to the respawn by Avec. He just has a superior stack, and if he doesn't have the stack, he's got the weapons to work with. And CNZ now really struggling. Yes, he has position on Heavy, but Heavy is not up for another eight seconds. Solid play from Avic. Not being too aggressive right there. Sure. He could have really just pushed in, but he realized that why would I, right? If I push in now and I die by a bad rocket, CNZ will take heavy. CNZ will move for Mega right away, and I can lose out on the control that I have. So, very clever play by Avic, showing a lot of restraint right there. He's got a huge lead, but he also just understands the situation and can work around it. Big rocket by Avic there. It's actually a nice push by CNZ, but when that rocket hits you in the face, not a lot you can do. Follow up in there. This should finally be a frag by CNZ, but you know, with two and a half minutes to go, eight frags the difference. It feels like a consolation frag at this point. Indeed, it does. Because we have to keep in mind, you were talking about it yourself, Dan, how strong Strog is on this map. Anarchy, he's fast, he's hella fast. But Strog, Strog is mobile himself, that crouch lining can give him such a boost in terms of acceleration. Plus, he's got that starting armor to start off with, since he is a medium champion. So if it comes down to an all-round race, and CNZ just has to blindly chase for eight more frags, Avic will have no issues keeping him at bay. Absolutely, and I think we've seen the full skill set of the Strog maximized on this particular map. You know, the Clouch siding to get into these positions earlier than CNZ had matched the speed has been a constant threat. The use of the Pika, as you've pointed out, has been absolutely superb. We don't normally see that that effective and so consistently. And at the same time as well, the use of those health piles has been invaluable. So it's just one of those small things to just appreciate how clever the the pick was in hindsight, because as we talked about, Avic may have picked oh, a Nison on another man. day here, and he really would have struggled. But just that tweak, picking the struggle up to counter the Anarchy, paid huge dividends. And now, a minute left to go, CNZ, racking up a few more frags, but six in a minute, one every 10 seconds. I just really don't see it happening anymore. That would be something remarkable. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when Avak is starting to hit rails like that and just plus backing until the clock runs down, then you know that the Polish Prince, representing Team Endpoint, will be securing map one. And yeah, in spite of uh, CNZ almost using his injector cooldown, he's only used it 11 times. And he's been trying to use it a lot. It also just shows the map dominance that Abak has had in that he hasn't been able to play the Vials as much as he would have wanted to either, just because of how much he's been on the back foot. 
So just small things like that have made a big, big difference in the context of this game. And so Abek is looking really, really good so far. But this is the one we did suggest Flea yeah. that he would probably struggle with. So, you know, in some in some degree, it's not a huge surprise. I think the way he got, he got manhandled, particularly in the mid game, even to me was, was a little bit of a surprise. But the result isn't so much of a surprise. Sure isn't. Now, CNZ, we know, Dan, that he is one of the most mentally resilient players in the league, right? He is so disciplined. We've seen some absolutely horrendous, unfortunate things happen to him at key moments. And he is one of those few players, I think, who's really able to just push himself past it. And that's exactly what he's going to do now. Map 2, whole different arena, whole different ballpark. This is going to be Awoken, where Afek will be running the Dune Slayer and CNZ is countering with the Nyx. And something that you just mentioned, Dan was about the files and I think that the file play is going to be oh so important on this map because it's very unlikely that Afek will be using that Berserk, that Rush consistently, right? And that leaves up a whole lot of files for CNZ to get that Ghost one. Yeah, it is a question and how much he does use it we'll, we'll see but I would definitely like to see him use it pretty much on cooldown as you just mentioned just to get around the map once he knows there's no opponent in his vicinity just for that denial capability. And so that's going to be an interesting factor in this map. But it's also potentially one of the reasons why the Knicks was picked as well, as you rightly pointed out. And in terms of just a general champion matchup, obviously Doom back in the day was hugely popular. It's fallen off a lot since then, but what it does give you is simple execution. It allows right. you to get up to that mid ground and, and do the simple tricks consistently and without fail. That's, that is so, so crucial. The small like, jump up to from Mega to t -jump to is just so powerful because it just gives you that extra speed, the better positioning. Obviously, Nyx can do the same, but she doesn't have the same stack. And so that execution allows Avec to make the moves he needs to. And if he does get into his rhythm, if he can get that stack up, it becomes very, very hard to dislodge a Doom. And so once again, I think the start is going to be huge here for the Knicks. If he doesn't give up the start, doesn't give up some items, doesn't have to use his Ghost Walker defensively early, he can sell into the game and should be okay. I think that's the big risk. If Avec comes out of the gate swinging and we see the same thing happening as happened on map one, then all of a sudden that, that Nyx active ability, it almost becomes a liability, right? Because you're just trying to survive from one ghost walk to the next, being pressured, being zoned out of all the items. And all you can do is play as passively as possible, make a move for those files just so that you have got that ready, right? That escape from jail card, you can pop it when there's pressure right in your face, but that really just slows the game down for you and puts you significantly on the back foot. So let's see what CNZ can do. We're starting this one off on Avex's point of view, running the Doom Slayer. Oh, he's given up both major items. They got greedy there, trying to suss out his opponent. And we asked, we said how the start was going to be. And for the Knicks, absolutely perfect. Saying that huge rocket coming out. Avex doesn't know the Ghost Walk is there, but it, it is just used to skirt himself away. So consolation is it's on cooldown, and Avex knows that. He has to find a way to get an item. He also needs to get his hands on the railgun, still lacking that crucial weapon. Seems he should have in his hands right now. Oh, Avec missing a jump. Luckily for him, it doesn't cost him his life, but he's left clinging to a sliver of health. It's gonna scrounge the map for those small health bubbles. Getting himself pretty healthy once again, but CNZ is now trying to apply pressure while staying in control of that mega. Yeah, this is just where the next shines. She's very nimble, she's quick, she can control the map. It's difficult to hit as well, and if she has to, she has a ghost walk to get out of there. And so, does she said now just to get across the map? Avec is there, he's seen it. He's also seen the timing as well, which is huge. And just that little bit of damage is so creative from Avec. It all adds up. Now the question, does Avec feel confident enough to make an actual play on this item? Oh, after hitting that rail, he just might. But still going up the bounce pad against an LG, that's suicide. And he waits until he hears CNZ make a play for those health bubbles and takes the perfect opportunity to secure himself a major item. This is so good for Avec. He's still zoned out for the heavy. CNZ taking a fair bit of damage right there, hanging on to that ghost walk, looking to preserve the ability, but in doing so, he actually sacrificed all his stack and his life! Nice, Avec tying it right back up. 
insane. I just want to point out how all of this has been manufactured off of that consistent ship damage, particularly that machine gun push. You know, these are the type of moves that really do separate the absolute best players from just some very, very good players. It's not about you know all these fancy flick rails and amazing shots. It's just about constant damage from safe positions, and that's what Avec is one of the best at. Just as you're talking about constant damage, Avic hits like what five, six rails in a row. Absolutely does not miss this man. But CNZ hit a few of his own. But now both players are actually on comparable stacks, but it is Avic who's got the better position. He's making move into the mega. Oh, falls just short. CNZ ballsy play, going for the rail and instantly using that ghost lock just in case he missed. Clutch plays by CNZ, as you say. Like, if he doesn't hit that rail, the Ghost Walk is irrelevant at that point. He's gonna die, and Avec is in the vicinity once again. And they're both hitting a lot of rails at this point in time, and they are trading, but you know they're both too weak to actually follow it up. CNZ, not really in a position to contest for the Mega. He might go for a sneaky rail. No, he's actually going to prioritize weapons. He spawned on Railgun's side of the map, meaning that he doesn't have rockets, doesn't have LG, and he wants to amend that situation as quickly as possible. Even choosing not to go for a sneaky shot over at the Mega, instead just prioritizing completing that arsenal of his. This, this is it's the right choice. This is the most critical time of the game now for CNZ. Avec is perfectly stacked. He's got a rotation of the items. CNZ just has to find a way to try and steal an item or do enough damage. And that's exactly what he's done. He's done more than that. He's actually won himself out in the stacked side of things at the moment. It's a really well played. A little bit overconfident, I have to say, from Avic there as well. Oh. Avic. Always getting off caught off guard right there, it seems like. Does he even know that Heavy is up? Avex so aggressive. He's pushing with a hundred health, zero armor yeah. to his name while Heavy was right behind him. We well, definitely knew he wanted blood. to maximize the use of it, and that's exactly what he's done. He's a bit late for the mega though this time. So maybe this time time in him down, but he does get the kill. Comes off in a pretty bad position himself, so don't be surprised to see this mix. Gosh, she has the ghost walk as well, so she knows she can push and clutch it out if she needs to, but she has the position she wants. Oof, but doesn't have a rail, and that's what Avec is going to abuse at this point. Good read from Avec. Knew exactly what route CNZ was going to take, lining up that rail, and oh! That's not good for the Polish Prince. Ghostwalk used to steal away the heavy land. Big damage just before, and now Avec is in trouble. CNZ should be able to win this one, indeed he does. Tied up 2-2. Two there are moments where it does feel that Avak is a little bit overconfident. It's almost like a bull seeing red when he sees these items, just holds the W key. CNC has been goading him in and coming out on top with these little traps he's setting up. So Avak has to show slightly more respect to CNC. He's not bullying him as much as we saw on map one. Map one at this point, Avak had a five crag lead and now it's all tied up. So indeed, much more balanced of a game. CNZ hoping to bait out the rail before picking up the Mega. Takes a bit of damage. Oh, can't even get away with the overstack. I don't like these awkward rail duels from CNZ's perspective. I don't think he's pulled a single one out and come out on top just yet. I want to see him be a little bit smarter with the way in which he's using that weaponry because Avec, more than happy to engage it. This is not looking good. He's going to steal away the, the heavy, but he's going to die for his troubles as well. at least some damage with the heavy nail gun right there, but won't be enough to dissuade Avec from pushing in relentlessly. Now Avec does showing a lot of respect right there. He knew that CNZ made it onto the railgun, that he was railable. Not a risk that he wanted to take. Much better to just fall right back on those health bubbles, secure those two small green armors. He knows that that is a luxury that CNZ does not have. And now Avec has the better stack plus positioning onto the heavy. Nice. Forces CNZ yeah. off the Great item, push. gets away with it. And this is the rhythm he wants to be in. He knew exactly what he wanted to get out of that. He just wanted to force the Ghost Walk out, and that's what he's done. But the LG from CNZ! Oh, out of nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just a dude, but 
Oh, just, yeah. I just realized this, but we haven't seen a single use of the Berserk, which is, you know, we asked that question at the start. We haven't seen right. it used once. So it's also part of the reason why CNZ has been able to force himself into this game so much is because he has so much uptime of that Ghost Wall. CNZ's aim when it connects truly can be a sight to behold his LG. Murderous right there. Not so sure about that one though. Pushing in like that, that was risky. And he ends up taking a lot of damage and is forced to use that ability. Now he's 35 seconds without the Ghost Walk. Should be able to whittle that down a fair bit with all those vials still up. But not in a good position right now. Solid. To somewhat delay that armor pickup right there. He knew that he wouldn't get full value out of it if he jumped clean on top of it. So instead he waited, baited out the fight and only then made a move for it. Yeah, CNZ is definitely playing a very smart game with this Nyx. I think the execution at times, particularly with the rail, hasn't been great, but as we just saw, when he does hit, particularly with the LG, looking very, very strong. Avec has now gone into a slightly more reserve mode, and rightly so. CNZ has got the aggression on, he's got the tempo up here. Lovely rail, and now he can just play the map. He can shut Avec out from these light armor, shut Avec out from these angles. Keep controlling it with two minutes to go. It just needs to play slow and steady and not give too much away. Heavy about to spawn. Avex in the better position to pick it up. Let's see. Can the rockets connect? 50 damage, 80 damage is all he gets out of it. Not enough to warrant a push. And that is exactly what CNZ is probing for right now. Yes, he's playing well then, but he's still one frag down. He needs to get another frag. Doesn't have all that much time to do it. A little over a minute left on the clock. So he's got to force out an opportunity. Maybe even use the Ghost Walk dress. Absolutely. And this previous minute from CNZ's POV has been extremely interesting to see because you just, you've realized how difficult it is to break this Avec wall when Avec plays defensive. Avec just did nearly 200 damage from a position where CNZ couldn't even really touch his opponent. And so this is the challenge right now. And as you rightly put it, has to use the Ghost Wall progressively, but he's already used it. And so now yeah. it has to just go mano a mano, old school style. He's going to drop into some LG. I don't know if that was deliberate, but it's going to work out somehow. Whew. CNZ. Wow. Mega is up. He could have made a move for it, but wisely chooses not to. He said Avic will walk away with it, but CNZ gets the heavy, and wow, yeah, Dan, I also don't think that that drop down was entirely intentional. But hey, if it works, it works. CNZ ties it up. 4 yeah. to 4. Might as well be overtime already. Might as well. Ghost Walk is up though, so he knows he can have a commitment if he needs to. Avec is in position. Items are pretty much bang on the same time, and now we are approaching overtime. Sudden death. And mentally, there is a little bit of a switch here. But he's actually waited too long. He's gonna have to use the Ghost Walk. He just pick up the heavy, but at what cost? Avec just comes barreling in. He's just no fear. Now CNZ is in a little bit of trouble. His opponent knows how weak he is without his much-needed ability. It is playing keep away. Been so oh, clutch. No. LG on LG. CNZ is in the worst position, but Athak, I don't think he even wants to risk it. Goes for the peak. This is the pit Heavy. of death for the past two minutes, Flea, as they've both been stuck here long before the item. Oh. still in the vicinity. Oh. oh no, CNZ thought he got away with it. But it is the pit of death. I've officially renamed it as that is where the crucial frags have come from. But what a game. What a game. And you already put it, you know, CNZ, the mentality monsters, managed to come back into this one and really nearly claw the victory from the depths of defeat. But Avic stays strong, stays aggressive as well, and manages to bully his way to that victory. There was a lot to like from CNZ so far, but also, like you said, then some painful. Yeah, misplays at times, right? Taking those railgun finds and missing shots that he really should be hitting. Also, towards the end, very debatable, right? Putting himself in that corner over that heavy. And then just kind of, to me, it felt like a fumble of the movement, right? Yeah. He really could have picked it up earlier, but instead he waited on top in that window, perhaps expecting Avic to double back, come around again, hoping for a clean rail. But no, Avic went all the way around, and then CNZ just had to plunge onto the item. And I think that that was kind of the beginning of the end. Yeah. It was a very awkward game at times, as we put it. You know, Avic was 67% rail. That was clearly decisive. And when he particularly was 
you know, using it on a defensive, we, we saw how difficult it was for CNZ to break through that rail. So when Abex aim was on, he was almost unstoppable. But there were definitely times of potential overconfidence or over aggression. So Abex was definitely still trying to find that balance of how far to commit at times. But when it was successful, you saw it was devastating. Did feel that CNZ lost his way a little bit towards the end as well. But nevertheless, you know, drawing that back very, very close. He was down for large parts of that map, even though he had a very, very good start. So you have to respect CNZ there. But Avec right. does come through, even though he didn't use ability once, which was something we wanted to look at. <laughs> and I think that also settles it in terms of the overall leaderboards, right? CNZ yep. now no longer has the opportunity to overtake Avec, meaning that he will finish in sixth place, maybe even lower, depending on how well Saneku plays later today. So CNZ, he had his shot to overtake Avec in the overall rankings, but won't be able to take away that seat from the Polish Prince as Endpoint Avec will be solidifying, I think, his fifth place spot. Absolutely, but we still have one map to go. And even though it's maybe yes. not to be decisive, it's definitely more than a pride element attached to this one. And it's the, probably the most interesting in terms of dynamics as we talked about in the very start of this particular series, given that we have the slash against the, a Galena. They could not probably be polar opposites, you know, in a Galena that just wants to set up camp in a corner of a map somewhere and just say goodnight, and a slash who just doesn't want to stop moving at 100 miles an hour. So very different play styles, very different strategies. But it definitely works out slightly harder from a Galena's point of view because you just always have to be self-aware as to what the Slash is doing and where she's positioned. And so, as we talked about, if CNZ can get off to that fast start, it becomes very difficult in the life of Galena. Well, let's see how well CNZ gets this show off the road from his point of view as he picks up the Mega as well as the LG. I think that one of the things that CNZ will have to be a bit careful of then is that he doesn't let the speed carry him. Because that is something that you do occasionally see, right? Yep. Players just, the speed just starts to take on a bit of a life on its own. And before you know it, you're carelessly jumping through each and every doorway, flinging yourself halfway into the next room because you're just moving so quickly. And if you're up against a more defensive champion like Divina, that can go wrong very quickly. So he has to still be reserved, be very mindful of his opponent's position and play a strategic game. Absolutely, and already that's what we're seeing. He realized he has the rail advantage. He's the one that's using that to maximum effectiveness. The heavy machine gun comes out. It can be very powerful, but it's not doing a lot at this point in time. And CNZ controlling the upper ground. And from a strategy point of view, again, he'll just want to defend this rail. He doesn't want to let his opponent get it. It's a strategy that I think you see more on this map than on any other just denying the railgun because it's so key. You also occasionally see it on Awoken, but Blood Covenant, due to the size, due to the long hallways and the angles that you've got, really can be rail central. So CNZ definitely making the right choice and trying to keep that weapon out of Avic's hands as long as possible, especially then when we consider that 67% rail from the previous map. But he obviously needs to be hitting more rail than we've seen in previous series because that's been one of the key letdowns. The other thing he needs to do is go and find some of these totems. I think Avec, if I'm right in saying, already has an overstate. So while CNC does have the heavy, which is the item of choice for the Galena, that stack, there you go. He survived with 74 yep. points of health. That's the overstack. That was decisive. Two out of the three totems are out of that little hallway, that little corner at the stairs over towards LG, which is a position that people very rarely tend to go on this map. So CNZ definitely has to be checking that room. Exactly, and CNZ struggling now, you know. Haven't seen much from the speed whatsoever. Avic is the one now, ever since getting that frag, just all over the slash. You can see how weak she is on that HUD. Doesn't have a rail either. Avic hasn't even gone to get a rail two and a half minutes in. He's quite happy with his heavy machine gun combo. Saying that he does double back now, realizing he's missed out on that Mega and in a perfect position to control this map. But still, always has to be wary of the speed. Avic looking to make a point then. He's like, okay, next or the previous map I, I won primarily due to my rail. So now I'm going to prove to you all that I can do it without any rail whatsoever. Now he does break that promise to himself, but oh my god, two good shots. 
Oh, oh he even no. forces out to spawn lovely. again. Lovely. Really lovely play. He spawns into a Mega, so not the end of yeah. the world, but even still. Avec is just on fire with his aim so far. And since he needs to dislodge his positioning on this high ground. Good spam coming out, though. You know, actually more effective than the railing we've seen. But saying that, Avec returns in kind. Two rails again. He's playing really well with it. Be healed. Avic just playing one of those bullet hell games for a moment right there, dodging the orbs, flying towards him, while still landing those rails, and CNZ once again caught between a rock and a hard place, the LG battering down when he's caught with nowhere to go, and now Avic already four frags up. No! Oh! Two totems, CNZ just ate two overstacked yeah, totems, meaning that they do extra damage as well. I mean, we, we always mention it in this particular matchup, you know, you have to watch out sliding around the map that you won't slide into the totems. We often slay it in a little bit of jest, and I think that's the first time I've genuinely seen it out of the blue. So, <laughs> quite, uh, quite the unfortunate turn of events for CNZ. And he's still got so many on the map. He's still got so many totems on the map, even though he just got two knocked off. Just like that, he's got max health, 175. Just as if he picked up a heavy, or a mega, rather. Healthy as can be. So now we're gonna see that Avic is trying to prioritize the heavy to generate his own health. I Means he does manage to take out those totems, though. Good amount of damage, Avic on the back foot. Can the Estonian hunt him down? No, Avec, those totems aren't there. You can't go looking for health. My life sustains you. There we go. Vile's coming in clutch. And now Avec no longer railable. Did a good job at surviving that. Yeah, and pretty much for the first time this game now, CNZ is very much on the front foot. He's got the items in his control. Avec on a defensive. So we're going to see how he manages this. We know how difficult it is, as we've talked about. But playing quite calm, just using those audio cues to reposition across the map, wanting to play this range game. And rightly so, this rail has worked out time and time again all series long at Avex. So he's actually quite happy to let this Slash play the map. All it takes is a single rail as long as Avex has that base down to equalize things. Huge rockets coming out. Avex is so weak and he still pushes on through. Sanity, but he's even things up for now as well. I think Havoc was just like, he's never going to expect me to push back through with what, 49 points of health, that's exactly what he did, and now he catches a nice LG burst from below, heavy spawns just in time. Ah, oh, CNZ, he had such a good opportunity, but Havoc proving the damage of his, making him into a turret, pretty much, relentlessly, matching, mirroring everything that CNZ throws his way. And even with such a stack advantage, such a positional and mobility advantage, it's still Avic who comes out on top. I think the thing that's impressed me most from Avic this particular game has just been his situation awareness. He's just understood when to push, how far he could push, where he should be at all times. And again, we've already mentioned it time to make it against the likes of the Slash who plays so quick. That is incredibly difficult, but Avic has made it work. And this level of efficiency in his damage output coupled with how effective his rail has been, it's, it's just nullified everything CNC has even attempted to throw his way. Avec indeed looking to close out the weeklies in style, pining for that 3-0 victory. CNZ, six strikes, three minutes to do it in. He's got Slash. That's the one thing working in his favor. He can apply so much pressure when he gets in control. And when Eva gets caught out, there's essentially nothing that he can do to get away. So he does have that going in his favor. But first, he needs to get into that position. And he needs to find Avic, who's playing so sneakily, so defensively right now. I enjoy your optimism, Flame. I am not sharing it at the moment. But I need CNZ to prove me wrong. And Avex used the audio cues once again just to scan the lines, get away. Causing havoc for CNZ as he can't get in. And when he's trying, he's the one eating damage. Avex stole himself a mega as well as he's kept timing. The rockets are decent, but the rails from Avex are better. And that surely has to be the last nail in the coffin. 
that optimism you were talking about, Dan, I, it, it's gone. It's, gone. it's oh. evaporated. Yeah, that, 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 was, that, that was just it. CNZ still adding frags to the board, but at this point, he just sacrificed so much of a stack to make that happen. And Avec is going to even pick up the Mega as well. Doesn't really have any weapons to work with, but still, time is just so heavily in his favor that I really don't see a way for CNZ to make the comeback happen. No, I don't think so as well. You can see even with a minute and a half to go, he's trying to chase him, but he's actually the one on the run as Avec is just harassing his somewhat advantage over on CNZ and keeping him on the back foot just by being aggressive. He lives and dies by the mantra that, you know, the best form of defense is aggression. And it seems to be working, as he will be walking away in this series with the 3-0 D. Obviously a minor scare on a Woken on map 2, but nevertheless, very clean map 1 and 3. And very impressive as well. Absolutely. Now looking at the leaderboards again, the overall rank. Then. And I think that Havoc is definitely going to be tuning in for the next match because he actually has a shot at overtaking a Razy. If Razy does not perform well against Chain, which I think is not something the bookies would put their money on, but <laughs> if Chain beats Razy, Havoc still has so not just finished top 5, but top 4 even. I mean, that would also be unexpected as we talked about. Havoc is one of these players that can okay. Beat anyone, he's good enough to beat anyone. Just finding the recipe, some ways adapting his game has is, is been a little bit of a weakness. As, as much as we credit the aggression when it works, we definitely have seen it be one of the pitfalls of his play. But today, it definitely wasn't. Found that balance in the end, despite the scares of him up to it, and it looked formidable. I'm going to throw map three slightly down to experimentation from a CNZ point of view. I've kind of said it before that I haven't seen him play an awful lot of slash. He's obviously good at the slash, but not good enough today. And we will be seeing throughout the day some players testing strategies. They may not have played consistently throughout the season because they need to know if they work before finals. And maybe this is one right. of them. Yeah, it could very well have been um, CNZ going for all lights. That's, that's just not something that we've typically seen him do. And indeed, Slash, not the champion that you would associate with him, um, or the likes of Scalebearer, which of course Avec wisely took out of the pool for map one. So 3-0 in the end, Avec, well-deserved victory, finishing the weekly stage of the season with a cherry on top putting himself in an excellent position going into the finals. And as you said then, Avec really is the kind of player who can beat everyone. We've seen him perform so well in the past, and I'm excited to see what he'll do in the finals. 100%. One of the players that I think everyone should be looking at to take it all the way, saying that CNZ consistently does well in finals. Don't count him out. Today, if you had to nail it down to anything, I think the rail has just been one of the big weak links in his play. Yeah. So suggest he goes spam some insta gig for a week or two just to get back on form because it was a huge letdown. The amount, particularly on map two, the amount of one-on-one -on -one rail fights he tried to take and consistently tried to take and just didn't work out. It gave Avec lifelines he shouldn't have had. So that was a big weakness, but overall I just felt Avec played, particularly map one and map three pretty much flawless throughout. So really, really well played and excited to see what he brings in a couple of weeks, Flea, in Romania. Absolutely, I'm looking forward to that as well. And just like you said, then we see it again, the match results awoke and really was the only close series, right? CNZ kept it nail-bitingly close to the very end before he got himself caught in a bad position. So Avic will secure the 3-0 and indeed, August 18th, that's the date. That's when we kick off the finals and Avic is looking in tip-top shape for those. 100%. And we're going to see everyone in person. That's going to be lovely. But anyway, not for now we won't. We're going to be going to a very quick break before we come back for the next series.